So this video is for GCSE Business Studies, uh, the finance unit, mostly focusing on the OCR exam board and its average rate of return. So what do we mean by the average rate of return? Well, if we're looking at the average, we're looking at a time span. And within this, what we're looking at is during that time span, what is the rate of return in terms of the investment this company is looking to carry out? So again, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, let's break it down. Uh, what is investment and why do we invest? Well, investment is when money is used to purchase an asset um, or a capital good, and that is expected to generate a return of income or profit. So when we're looking at the average rate of return, we're looking at the average rate of that income or profit over the, ti the time span that has been given by the firm. And when we're looking at an asset, well, there's different ways a company can invest depending on the industry that they're operating and how they actually operate. So, for example, it could be land and buildings. So that could be, for example, um, maybe creating a new factory or a new fulfillment center. It could be machinery. So again, if you're a company that is capital intensive and you require a lot of machinery, um, invest in new machinery or updating the machinery that you've got is an example of investment. You could be maybe working in distribution and a fleet of vehicles would be absolutely crucial. Um, or maybe you're a new taxi firm and again, you're having to invest in those vehicles. Whatever it might be, um, vehicles is another example of investment. And um, software, especially in today's world, uh, software is used by every single company, uh, whether that's in education, like schools that you're in at the moment, or uh, whatever it might be. If you're, for example, investing in something like computer-aided design, then that software is an example of an investment. Because what these capital goods do, they help to offer the service or consumer good uh, that, is, that is obviously selling to the customer. So, if they're investing in land and builders, machinery, vehicles, software, obviously they've got a choice to make. They're not going to just have one option, or it'd be very, very rare to have one option. So what they need to do is they need to try and judge which uh, land and buildings or machinery, vehicle, softwares they should spend the money and invest in. And to do that, they need a financial method of, obviously, I suppose, judging the success or the potential success that this investment could incur. And that's where the average rate of return comes in. Because really, the whole point of this investment is to get that return. Otherwise, it's absolutely pointless. So, the average rate of return is a quantitative method of deciding whether an investment is likely to be worthwhile based on the average annual amount of cash generated over the life of an investment. So, in your uh, OCR, GCSE business studies, you will be expected to calculate the average rate of return. And you might even have to use that calculation within your analysis or within your evaluation. So it has three steps to it. And these three steps, again, depending on the question, you might have to do something else with those three steps. But the main three steps are the following. So you'd have to, first of all, recognize what your total income is. You might have to calculate that total income. It's sometimes in GCSE, it's also considered to be profit. Uh, that's different to A level, but again, you'd might, you might have to work out that total profit. Now, that total profit, you'd still have to exclude the cost of the investment. So you wouldn't include it at the time of working out your total income or your total profit. So what you do is you find out your total income or your total profit, then you'd minus the total cost of the investment. So whatever the cost of the machine is, for example. Once you've got that, then you need to work out what the annual profit or the average annual income would be and to do that you have to divide it by the number of years now you'll be given the number of years it might not be obvious they might just say they might not just come out and say the number of years for this investment in terms of expected return is five years they might show it in a different way but i'll kind of highlight that within this video so that's going to give you, you your annual average profit but we're not looking for that we're looking at the rate of return the average rate of return so what we'd have to then do is the third step and that would be your average annual profit from number two um, divided by the actual cost of the investment. And then we times it by 100 because we, get, we, want, we want to show it as a percentage. So let's give an example. So what we've got is we've got um, this, this financial um, table. And we know the cost of the equipment because that's what we're going to invest in is £5,000. They've given us the income for every year for five years. 
So straight away, what we can uh, assume just from this table alone is that this would be a, an expected five-year investment um, in terms of the rate of return. Now, it does say it expects to last for five years. So it's giving you that information as well. But sometimes it doesn't always say that and you just base it on the table. So it's actually also giving you the total income. In some questions, they might not give you the total income of 13,000 and you just have to simply add them up. So what we've got is we've got 13,000 and we'd subtract our 5,000 and that would give us £8,000. And that's obviously the inclusion of the cost of equipment. Now we know it's over five years, so we get that 8,000 and we divide by five and that'd be £1,600. But now we're looking for the average rate of return. So that 1,600 divided by 5,000, we want it as a percentage, so we'll times it by 100, and it is 32%. Now, is 32% good? Well, okay, it depends. It depends on what the other options are. Um, if we've got other options of that equipment, maybe it might give us a higher average rate of return. So, and again, maybe the objective of the entrepreneur or the owner is higher than 32%, so therefore it wouldn't be meeting that objective. It just depends on the context that is given. Now, this was from a past paper, and it's HD Sewing and Fast Stitch. And what we've got, uh, they've actually given you the average rate return for Fast Stitch, uh, but they've not given you it for HD Sewing. So if you were ever in a situation and you had a question like this and you were thinking, oh, how do you work it out? You could actually use Fast Stitch to kind of accommodate that understanding of how they actually achieve 13.8 and what can we use with fast stitch to get that for hd sewing in terms of their average rate of return but how did they get 13.8 percent well what they did was um they ignored sales revenue because that's not needed they've put that extra information in i'm not saying to trick you but to to really test your understanding so you've got your twenty two thousand, and it says returned within five years so what we do is our 22,000 times by five, which gives us 110,000. So then we, once we've got that information, we can start step one. So step one, 110,000 minus 65,000, and we've got 45,000 pounds with the inclusion of the cost of the company. So this investment is actually buying the company. Um, then we need the average annual profit, and that's 45,000 divided by five, which gives us 9,000. And then we get the average rate of return. So 9,000 divided by 65,000 times by 100, and we get 13.8%. There we go. Right. So let's do the same for HD sewing. So we've got our 25,000. Let's times it by 5. 125,000. Let's minus 80,000. And we've got the exact same um, total profit. But the purchase price of the business is different. So what we'd do is we'd still divide it by, uh, obviously, 5. But when we get to the final stage, we will get a different amount because of that purchase price. So uh, 45,000 divided by 5, again 9,000. But then we've got the 9,000 divided by 80,000 times by 100 and we get 11.25%. So which one do we pick? Well, we pick Fast Stitch because it's got the highest average rate of return. So we're going to get a greater average rate of return based on that investment. So another way it might be shown. Uh, the entrepreneur wants to see the return on investment within five years. Um, so we've got a net profit per year. Again, all we'd simply do is 30,000 times by five or 25,000 times by five. Then we take into account the purchase price of the machine. So I'll do machine A first and I'll do machine B. So machine A, what we've got, and again, feel free to pause the video and have a go at this yourself, but we've got 30,000 times by five equals 150,000 minus the purchase price of the machine, which is 50,000 divided by five, which is obviously the years, and that's 10,000, and that's the average annual profit, divided by the purchase price of the machine, and we'll get 10%. Machine B, gain 25,000, this time, again, times by five, 125,000. The purchase price of the machine is different, 75,000, so therefore we've got 50,000, divided by five, 10,000, 10,000 divided by 75,000, and we get 13.3%. So which one do we pick? Well, we pick machine B because it's the highest one. So, we have to select the investment option with the highest average rate of return. And if you only have one option, then read the case study and see what is the objective of the owner? What average rate of return are they hoping to achieve? Because then you can deem that as a success as well. Right, okay, so the tips. Remember, it's a three-step approach. The exam board recognises profit, so it's profit which does not consider the cost of the investment, and therefore the cost of the investment will always have to be deducted in step one. The answer should always be shown as a percentage. 
And if your decision is based on the data alone, you will always select the option with the highest average rate of return. And the reason why I've said that last bullet point is because if it's, for example, a nine marker, that you cannot just base that on the average rate of return. You'll have to read the rest of the case study and see what other information might be given. Because you have to remember, and this is in my final slide, you have to remember that these figures are simply predictions. So when you're reading the rest of the case study, you might have qualitative information which might just be as important as this quantitative information. But why calculate it? Because it's a way of planning a decision. It's a way of a quantitative decision-making tool um, where we've actually planned out based on data that we have. That data might not always be accurate, but it's, it's, a, it's a way of making that decision and it's possibly better than just do it on um, maybe your intuition and just doing it on a hunch.